So in this video, I'm going to talk about how substrates affect E2 and SN2 reactions. And so in previous videos, we discussed that E2 competes with SN2 reactions. And so primary, secondary, and tertiary alkyl halides can undergo E2, but it's going to have different results. And so let me give you an example of that. And so I've drawn two of the same molecules below, and we're just what we're going to do is we're just going to run them through different nucleophiles and see what happens. And so for the molecule above, we're going to use sodium ethoxide. And then for the molecule below, we're going to use potassium tert-butoxide. And so as you can see, they're pretty different in their sizes, and that's what we're going to be concerned with. And so to the right of the page, I've drawn the two reactions that will occur. So one of them would occur if the molecule underwent an SN2 reaction, and the other one would occur if the molecule underwent an E2 reaction. And so the molecule on the top of both sections would be the molecule that underwent the SN2 reaction. And then the one on the bottom with the pi bond would be the one that underwent the E2 reaction. And so with the sodium ethoxide as the nucleophile, your major product would be the molecule that underwent the SN2 reaction. And so this means that if you use sodium ethoxide as a base, you're going to get mostly SN2 reactions. And on the other hand, if we react this molecule with tert-butoxide, you're going to get very trace amounts, so essentially no SN2 product. And the major product is going to be your E2 product. Now let's try and explain why this happens. Why when you have a big bulky base, you get elimination reactions. So when you have a big bulky base like this one down here, a substitution reaction will be really slow because the nucleophile is too hindered, so it can't really get to the carbon. On the other hand, your sodium ethoxide molecule, so this one right here, is pretty small, and so it's going to be able to reach this carbon and kick out the bromine to do a substitution reaction. And so one thing with all of this that we just learned, keep in mind that the molecule that I used is a primary substrate. Now, a primary alkyl halide, sorry. Now let's talk about what happens when you have a secondary or a tertiary alkyl halide. And so one thing to remember is that E2 reactions are unavoidable for secondary and tertiary alkyl halides. So once again, I've drawn the two molecules on the right. And so as you can see, with secondary substrates, when small bases such as ethoxide or, for example, hydroxide are used, you can get some SN2. But because the electrophilic carbon is more hindered, the elimination products are observed in higher yields. So pretty much you just get more elimination product, which would be this one right there. Now on the other hand, if you used a big bulky base like this, you would only get E2 reactions. And so one really important thing to remember is that if you add heat to a reaction, it's always going to favor an elimination reaction. So if you ever see heat designated by a delta sign, so it just looks like a little triangle, um, that's a great hint to pick the elimination product. And finally, one last thing to mention is that I talked about, we were going to talk about E2 for secondary and tertiary alkyl halides. Remember that SN2s, SN2 reactions, are not possible with tertiary substrates because it's too hindered. And so that pretty much sums it up for this video. I hope this video helped you. If it did, please give it a like and share it with your friends.